This is the second video in a series of three so far, where we are going over some of the basic functionality of Fabric to kind of see how some of the options available there can help data analysts have more ownership over their data and be able to accomplish some of the tasks that they need to incorporate data into their analytics. So in the last video, we talked about how you create a lake house and how you would create shortcuts and kind of the benefits of doing that. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off there with some of the objects we brought in, and we're going to look at how we can use the Dataflow Gen 2 tool to transform a messy Excel budget file that might be useful to incorporate with data that we've already brought in from other locations. So that's what we're going to walk through today. The, the goal is to um, have loaded an Excel file into our lake house and then transform it using this Dataflow Gen 2 tool. And the very last step of using that tool is to surface it in our table section so that we can update our semantic model in the report we created and see if we're able to view the ad hoc data that we've incorporated in to our reporting along with sort of the company managed data that we've previously brought in via shortcuts. Now we're gonna move over to the lake house that we created. We have um, this lake house, um, the SQL Analytics endpoint, which all this stuff is created when you create a lake house. We have a report that's based on the semantic model. The semantic model is based on the objects that we ingested into our lake house. And this is kind of what that looks like from a lineage view. And we have some other things here that you don't need to worry about, but really what we're looking at is the original source of data is this workspace. We are taking a shortcut to technically it's in our lake house, but nothing's been written to our lake house. We really just have a reference point to this lake house to view the objects that we've um, quote unquote brought in. That analytics endpoint that allows you to use SQL Server Manager or Tabular Editor to um, analyze the data in the SQL analytics endpoint, then the semantic model was created using the objects that we brought in via shortcut, and then we created a report based on that. So that's just a quick overview of what we've done. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, load a file into our lake house. So in our lake house, we are going to get data, and we've talked about these different ways to get data. Uh, one step before that. So in my file section, this is our unstructured data section. I have a budget file that lives here, this. So basically what this is, is we've taken the, call this the customer key, the customer key, which would really be like a customer name and then the targets for sales for these periods that are up top. And so there's some reasons why this would be difficult to use in a semantic model because it's laid out as a matrix, it has totals, and there's plenty of ways that you could go about modifying this in Excel. But the problem you run into with Excel is Excel is a little bit of a black box. And so nobody knows what you're deleting, what logic you're applying. And if it doesn't line up with what people expect, sometimes it's difficult to understand why, unless you're the person who created it. And that just leaves risks around sort of employee retention or if an employee moves on to a different role, um, that can create problems. Uh, it's generally referred to as like a black box. So anytime you're building reporting, once it gets to a certain size, most leadership wants to get out of Excel. And that's what we're able to do with Fabric. So I have this saved. I'm going to close it so that I can use it. And we have a file in here. This isn't the updated file. So I'm just going to go in and upload. And then I'm going to navigate to the file that I have. It's this budget file. And so what's happening here is Fabric is pointing out that the file already exists. And so you have the option to change the name of the file and reload it if you want to keep both copies. In this case, I want to overwrite it. And what you the reason I'd want to do this is if, I, if there was a budget file being managed outside of a system, it's very likely that changes would be made, updates would be made, and we need to reflect those. And so it's better to just be able to overwrite the whole file as opposed to try to marry these multiple files together. Though it probably could be done, but so we're gonna upload it. Now this file exists in here. We can't really view it. Basically, the file type isn't supported for preview. What we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, a transformation tool that um, is available in Fabric. 
called Dataflow Gen 2. This allows you to prep, clean, and transform data, as they say it, much better than I could. Um, so we'll click on that. And we want to name our data flow. I'm going to call this bud transformation. Um, this has to do with Git integration and deployment pipelines. So we're not going to worry about that. If you use end up using Git integration and deployment pipelines, um, you'll just want to understand uh, what you're doing, whether you check or uncheck that box. OK, so we have our Power Query window. There's a couple different ways that we could bring in data. So we uploaded to our lake house. If we hadn't done that, I could have just imported it directly here. Um, I don't love doing that because I like kind of keeping everything in, in the lake house if we can. Um, so I'll choose a data source. I missed it. So I want to go to my lake house. And it's called this coolest lake house. And so I'm going to select that. And it's going to open up the objects that are available for me to choose from. And I can choose from either tables or files. And so previously, we had these tables that we brought in. But we had this file. Once you open it up, we'll see that we have our budget file. We can select that. This is kind of the source data that we're going to use to begin our transformations. And so when we bring this in, sometimes this will take a little bit. So in here, in this first step, we can get rid of that second step. And then we can navigate to the content by clicking that link. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up this. And then we can see our data by selecting the hyperlink from the table there. And now we can see exactly um, what why this is problematic. We have a couple extra rows, a couple extra columns. Um, not great. So we want to start by getting rid of, uh, I think it's the top five rows. And that's just to remove the header. And then we want to get rid of some of these columns. There's these blank columns that do us no good. And this grand total column, we're going to need to get rid of it later. So I'm just going to remove it. If you're worried about how fast I'm going through some of these transformations, basically this video is to help support some of the sessions we run called uh, Dashboard in a Day, where we go into detail about the transformations that are available in the Power Query um, editor or the Dataflow Gen 2 screen that we're looking at here. But um, it's definitely possible to get engaged and go to one of those sessions. Now that we've deleted some of the columns and rows, I think there's a couple, I think there's a grand total row that I need to get rid of. I think we go to line 35. Okay, so I think there's another way that we can do this. So I see that I need the top 31 rows. And I can keep these rows, the top 31 rows. This isn't ideal, but for the sake of showing the functionality, we're just going to do that. If you don't like it, you can always come back and edit it or delete it. I'm going to delete it just to make sure. Yeah, 31 is the last row I need. So I'll go back and keep the top 31 rows. And then I'm going to promote these items to the header. And that is done here. So we're going to use the first rows as headers. And now we have something that's approaching usable. So the only real problem is that our, our dates and values are kind of in a matrix format. We prefer them in a data table format. And we can do that by unpivoting them. And so we grab the columns that we need. And we select from the transform section, there is an unpivot column section. And what that's going to do is it's going to move our attribute and value to have rows. And this is going to be So we need a date key to make this match with our table. And the way that we do that is we select our date, our date attribute, and then we go to add column. We're going to do column from examples from selection. And what's happening is we're going to type in what we want. And then after a couple of examples, Fabric's going to provide a formula that it thinks applies the business logic that we're looking for. So I know that our date key is going to be the year and then the day. And then same for here, 2017. Now what's happened is we can see that Fabric has taken a stab at transforming this date column into kind of the examples we've given it. This happens to be right. So I know that this needs to be a whole number. I'm just going to go forward. 
And then this is another thing. In Excel, if you delete a column that's sort of your source column for a formula, you generally end up with issues. But here, that is not an issue. So it's nice that you can kind of get to just the data you need. And now we have um, a date key, a customer key, and a budget amount. These will help us leverage some of the dimension tables that are available. And so now what we want to do is we want to choose where this data is going to land. It's going to land in the lake house. Um, we're going to use the default connection that's provided. Now we go find our workspace, the lake house that we want to save this in. And then uh, we are going to call this budget. OK, this already exists. So I'm going to call it budget one for simplicity sake. Here we can see on the source data types and how they'll kind of be shown in the destination. So that's great. We can save the settings. That takes a minute. Now we have a destination. And what that means is that when this is published, this uh, output is going to be saved as a table in our lake house. So when we publish, it's going to take a second. And we'll see a little flag up here on the right side that shows that the data flow has run. One thing I'll talk about while this is running is you don't want to use, there's something called a data flow gen one. That will not allow you to do what we're doing here in terms of landing your output in your lake house. And so we've done that. We can see that it finished. So always use data flow gen two. You're performing uh, transformations like this. And so this is a budget file that I created earlier. I had the wrong time period. So it doesn't work with what I'm about to do next. So we're going to hit refresh, and this may take a couple of refreshes, but we can see budget one is starting to come through. I'm just gonna hit refresh one more time. Now, what we want to do is we wanna to navigate to our semantic model, which lives in our workspace also, and we want to bring in the table that we just created so we can compare it with that sort of organizational data, if you will. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to look at editing. And then we have this budget file, and I've just deleted that, so it shouldn't even be here. But I'll just make sure it's not. Um, this may or may not be available already, but we have tables. OK, great. Our budget table is there, budget one, as it were. This is how we add new tables into our semantic model. So if you created a semantic model doing kind of the stuff that we've done in the previous video and this video, and then for some reason there's another table or a change in the table, if there's another table or a table goes away, um, you can use uh, this option here to add and remove these things. OK, so budget one is now in here. We want um, the customer key to match with the customer key. And by dragging from the fact table, which is what we've added essentially, the date key to the date table, we always drag from the fact table to the dimension table or from the transactional table to the categorical table. Um, that ensures that your relationship has the right direction and uh, cardinality. And now we have these tables in here. So the next thing will be to probably refresh one more time, just because, like I said, I like to refresh things. Now in the report, um, we can hit edit. This will allow us to see, oh, sweet, budget one is already there. And so I'll just create a new page. And if we grab the, I'm going to use a field called start of month. Now that we're using the start of month from this dimensional table, we can grab the sales amount from this fact table. Sum of sales in there. You can see kind of throughout time. And then our budget is only for 2017, but we'll include that in here. Okay. So now we need to, we're going to, to create a case statement to filter what we need so that we don't see all this information that we don't need. And 
on there before. So now, pick that. When you do these case statements, you always need to hit apply. Now we can see that there's a bit of a difference. And if we wanted to um, dig into the day level information, I think we could do that. So right now, when you kind of hover over things, you can see what the budget amount was versus what the sales amount was. And you can see the sum of sales came in lower than the budget amount on a lot of these. Um, the scale is making it difficult. So I wonder if we just this point. Yeah, so I took out a month just to show that there is an actual difference. But the whole thing that we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to um, take a piece of messy data that may not be organizationally managed and marry it together with nice clean data that may be organizationally managed. And that's what we've done here. So we took the sum of sales from the fact table that came from, uh, let's just go over here so we can look at this one more time. So the, the dimension tables and the sum of sales tables, they all came from this OAFSCM fabric production uh, workspace. And we brought in some of those tables into our lake house. Additionally, we used a budget transformation to bring a, more information into our lake house. And by doing that, we could access um, both kind of structure or not structured, sort of managed data, organizationally managed data and ad hoc data. And then we were able to model them out together because the way the file was created um, and then we were able to incorporate that into a report and the one thing i didn't necessarily mention in this is that we were able to use this um, transformation to take something that was really messy and make it into um, an object fit for purpose in a data analytics scheme the case remains the same that we were able to kind of marry together a bunch of different data and this is one of the cool features of Fabric, being able to use a Dataflow Gen 2 tool to clean up data and land it in your lake house so that you can use it in tools like Power BI.